So we're going to start our work in a third year organic chemistry by looking at enols and enolates. This is a very large section of work and uh, will encompass, gosh, I guess almost half of the material you're going to be doing this semester. And so in the beginning, what we're going to do is just have a look at what exactly is an enol, what is an enolate, and, and look at just some of the various flavors that this, uh, this type of chemistry comes into. Um, it's important to establish this foundation uh, well in the beginning because we do have, as I said, the, there's a lot um, of work and, and chemistry that surrounds us. But we just, as long as we know the foundations, we can move forward uh, in confidence. And enol is actually... Uh, this, I'll give you an example. This is basically what an enol uh, looks like in a very simple sense. Um, it would be something like this, all right? Um, a molecule like this doesn't actually exist uh, in, in very large amounts, um, but the, the enol is this functional group. It's an alkene, all right? The ene and this OH, which looks like an alcohol, ol. So that's where we get the name enol. Uh, Enols are uh, actually just tautomers of, um, of ketones or, or aldehydes. And we're going to see how this happens. I want, actually, what I want you to do is I, I want you to go back and I want you to your textbook and have a look at how um, you would convert a ketone like this into an enol. I'm not going to do the mechanism with you now. Um, I want you to actually look at uh, enolates, but just... Again, to surround, do I use this word? These are tautomers. Uh, if we look at this, uh, this is acetone over here, uh, three carbons, there are three carbons over here, uh, six hydrogens, one, two, three, four, five, six hydrogens, and one oxygen. All that's different really between these two things is that one hydrogen that was over here is now sitting on the oxygen, and the double bond has, uh, has shifted. All right, so <clears throat> go and make sure that you can do the mechanism uh, of that. Uh, their use, we will look at e uh, enols as being used as, uh, as, as nucleophiles, but um, by far the greatest uh, importance, important structure is the enolate. So an enolate is almost the same as this, it's just not the OH. Uh, so we have an O minus over there. This is your quintessential enolate, all right? Um, and uh, actually, the, the, the enolate itself has two resonance structures. Okay, it's not tautomers, it's resonance structures, because the resonance structure is just the shifting of lone pairs of electrons or, or pi electrons without changing any of the atom bonds that are, are, are occurring. And so we can use our resonance arrow over there. And the other resonance structure is where the negative charge sits on the carbon, not like not the oxygen over here. Uh, doing the arrows for this, we can push the electrons in, we can push the electrons out, we end up over there, and obviously going back, we can form the double bond, and we end up with a negative charge on the oxygen. All right. So resonance structures, in reality, this compound exists as, as a mixture of um, these two. It's not just one or the other. Um, when we draw these out, typically the enolate, all right, the enolate we typically draw out as this one over here. This is the important structure in terms of um, when we're doing our mechanisms. Reason being is that the oxygen is a little bit more electronegative, so the negative charge is going to be a little bit more on the oxygen. However, just to confuse matters a little bit, the most important structure in terms of uh, reactivity and most of the reactions that you're going to see is the other one. It's where we think of the enolate actually as a carbon with a negative charge on it. All right, and this, this one is the one where we're going to see most of the reactions happening. So we're always going to draw like this, but we have to think of it like that. I hope that's not too confusing. Uh, how does an enolate form? Well, this one would have arisen from uh, just acetone, and we would have added a base. Um, we'll discuss the types of bases soon, uh, but for now, what happens is the base comes, picks up a proton, and this proton has been made acidic because when we remove this proton, the negative charge that gets formed on this carbon can resonate into the carbonyl. And this is where 
all this chemistry is, 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 is based on, is the fact that that proton is fairly easy to remove. The pKa of protons next to ketones is in the region of about 20 to uh, 25. That's kind of the, 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 the range for your pKa's um, next to carbonyl uh, compounds, next to ketone, closer to 25. Um, and we'll look at some of the others later. All right, so <clears throat> that kicks in like that, and we get the enolate being formed over there. And just one small thing here is that this is an equilibrium, all right? Uh, when a base removes a proton, uh, it's an equilibrium because an acid-base reaction, if the base is incredibly strong, we can push the equilibrium all the way over to the right-hand side. If the base is very weak, the equilibrium is going to sit more towards the left-hand side. That's a very important concept for, for you two to understand. Once we understand this basic chemistry, okay, how we're forming the enolates, then we can consider the fact that what we have here, this enolate, is a molecule that has a negative charge on an oxygen or it has a negative charge on a carbon. And whenever we have molecules that have negative charges on them, we can consider them to be nucleophiles. And nucleophiles are able to do reactions. They're able to form new bonds. And so if we add an appropriate electrophile to the mix, whatever that electrophile is, I'll just make it an E+. Plus. Either the electrophile can react in the oxygen, and we can get a reaction that occurs something uh, like that, um, or the electrophile could add on to the carbon, and we get the movement of electrons that looks something like that. All right. So we're going to deal with reactions a bit later, but right now I just want to build on a little bit more uh, uh, on uh, the types of enolates that we can get. So that we understand that uh, enolates are generally molecules that have a carbonyl. Um, so we have some sort of uh, the carbonyl molecule over here, and that they're gener they are formed when we are deprotonating uh, a carbon that has a hydrogen on it next door to the carbonyl. We call that the alpha uh, carbon because it's next door to the carbonyl. So we're taking hydrogen alpha to the carbonyl. Uh, if you have any any kind of molecule that has a that looks like that, um, we, we can generally form an enolate of that. But within that context, let's just look at the different functional groups that we have. The simplest is uh, a ketone. I'll draw butanone over here. So we're looking at ketones. Um, and if we form an enolate of that um, using some kind of base, uh, we have actually two options that can form. The one looks like this, and the other one is where the enolate is on the inside. We're going to discuss a little bit more about this, uh, the choice between these two over here. Uh, for now, just consider that this one over here is a little bit more stable than this one over here because the double bond over here is more substituted than this one over there. All right, we will come back to this, so don't stress too much about that for now. Uh, so we have ketones, and then of course we have aldehydes. Uh, and aldehydes, if we just draw a very simple aldehyde, like that, that's acetaldehyde. Uh, acetaldehyde, once again, we can, uh, using a base, we can actually form an enolate which would look like this. Okay, now this is a little bit in theory um, because we're going to see late, later on that aldehydes are very reactive and, and doing something like this can be a bit of a problem because this is going to react with this one over here. Uh, Again, I'm just telling you this now just to get some uh, perspective uh, of just this idea of forming an enolate. Uh, so just to get you thinking about that. All right. Make sure you can do mechanisms for all this, that you can actually generate each of these ones. You should practice that yourself. One thing I just want to show you with the aldehyde, because this is a common um, problem, uh, particularly when you're learning this chemistry. So, so draw out this aldehyde a little bit more carefully here. Uh, there's a tendency sometimes for people to take a base, um, so a base with a minus on it and whatever it might be, and we come and take this hydrogen away over here. We just sort of follow the arrows carefully with this push that we're doing, uh, just to show you why this is actually a mistake and why we can't get to uh, why this is a problem. First of all, uh, removing this hydrogen over here puts the negative charge onto this carbon it's important to see that that negative charge cannot go anywhere. It's not a delocalizable 
if that's a word, uh, delocalizable uh, <laughs> pair of electrons. All right. It cannot go onto the oxygen because then you're going to have a triple bond to the oxygen plus the two lone pairs of electrons and oxygen will end up with 10 electrons around it. It cannot go over here to form a double bond onto this carbon because this one's got three hydrogens on. In order to do that, we'd have to kick a hydrogen out. Um, otherwise, we'd have five bonds to the carbon. So this negative charge is not delocalized in any way. So what we've done here, by using this base to pick up that proton, this is not the most acidic proton in the molecule. It is not acidic at all. It's incredibly difficult for someone to remove the hydrogen from an aldehyde and the base would prefer to remove the protons that are sitting here to form an enolate of that form. Okay. So the next um, obvious sort of compound that has a, a carbonyl in it is the carboxylic acid. Um, so on the one side we have alpha hydrogens, on the, on the other side we've got an OH, but of course the whole group is this uh, carboxylic acid. Um, so we've been teaching, started teaching you about enolate formation, so of course when you, uh, when you add a base to this, you're going to start thinking, okay, I want to add a base and I'm going to remove that proton over there to form the enolate. The problem is, is that that's not going to happen. You have to look at the molecule as a whole, and the most acidic proton in this molecule is the H of the carboxylic acid. All right, the pKa of this H over there is around about 4, well, in acetic acid is 4.7. And so this is the most acidic hydrogen. So any base that you have is going to pick up a proton over there. And what we're going to get is the carboxylate anion, which of course is resonance stabilized. Um, removing the hydrogen over here is incredibly difficult. In order, You can do it, uh, but in order to do that, we need to use um, an FSB. We'll call it a flippin' strong base um, to be more appropriate. Uh, and then we can uh, remove this uh, uh, hydrogen over there, but we do need an incredibly strong base in order to, to do that because we're now forming a molecule that is actually a, a, a dianion. Just a little bit on this though is that actually um, forming the enolate type equivalent um, of a carboxylic acid is very difficult. However, the enol equivalent is actually a little bit easier. And so we can use an acid to do this. Um, <clears throat> and I told you, you must go and look up the mechanisms of how this would happen. Uh, but you can, you can get this to happen with an acid and then you form an enediol. Uh, All right, remember this is uh, now a tautomeric form, not resonance, tautomeric form. And this is an enediol. All right. Um, don't get used a lot, but I'm just putting that there for, for information. Something that is easier, though, and is important for us to look at is the, the ester. All right. So I draw out a very simple ester like that. And this one is now, if we have a base, we can remove the proton over here, and we can form the, the expected uh, enolate uh, again. We stress, make sure you can do these mechanisms. There's just one small kind of provisor that we need to, to look at with the, the esters. And the problem is, is that an ester um, has also an electrophilic carbon. And nucleophiles can attack this carbon over here. Why that is important is it depends when we want to form this type of enolate over here of an ester. We do need to choose our base very carefully. We have a couple of options, and we still need to talk about the, the types of bases that we can use. But often with esters, uh, particularly if you we're just doing these types of reactions where we don't need a lot of this forming, just low quantities, we can use a weak base like our alkoxides, the O minuses, with some sort of R group over there. But look very carefully what will happen. So what we want to happen here is we want this base to go and pick up the proton over there so that the electrons can go in, bounce out, and we get this enolate. But this alkoxide, this O minus base, is also a very good nucleophile. And so in this reaction, there's the potential, and this does happen, there's a potential for this to add to the carbonyl in this sort of fashion. 
And this should not be anything unusual to you. You should be used to seeing that because this is the type of um, uh, mechanism that is used in the hydrolysis of, of, of esters. And so we get an equilibrium being set up where the intermediate is this tetrahedral intermediate with an OME, and we now have an OR sitting on there. And there's potentially what can happen now is that this, when this negative charge kicks back in, it can either kick out the OME or the OR. If it kicks out the OR, we're going back to the starting point. If it kicks out the OME though, what we're going to end up with is a brand new ester depending on what this R group is. All right. So the solution to this type of chemistry is just to choose your R group of your alkoxide very carefully. In this case, if the R group it was now equal to methyl, all right, it means that here it would be methyl, which means that after this exchange, we're actually left with the starting material again. So it's just a small provisor. We can use other stronger bases that uh, are, are very bulky, that, that, that won't add to the ester, but we'll deal with that uh, at a later stage. There's not a lot to say about amides. Uh, primarily because like carboxylic acids, uh, the most acidic uh, proton is not the one alpha to the carbonyl, but rather the hydrogen that's sitting on the, ni the nitrogen. It's not a very acidic hydrogen, but it is certainly more acidic than um, the, 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 the hydrogen's alpha to the carbonyl. And so the problem is when we add a base, we're going to get this intermediate uh, anion, uh, and which of course is resin and stabilized. And this is then very difficult to deprotonate again. And so in general, these things are not used uh, um, uh, synthetically. So we don't have to worry too much about the amides. There are two other flavors of uh, enol and enolate chemistry which we do need to cover, um, and and that is the the the, the enamine and the azeenolate. Uh, and these are the uh, the nitrogen equivalents of the chemistry that I've already shown you. So as an example, if we were to just take an aldehyde, I'll just choose some random aldehyde like this, uh, and we had to treat it with a primary amine. Uh, let's put an R prime on it, and uh, it's a NH2. So this is a pri some primary amine. You should know that you can condense these two and you get a functional group called an imine. It is in it's important that you can do this mechanism. Please do practice this uh, at, at home. All right, so there we form our imine. I just want to look carefully at this. If you look very carefully at these two things, this is an aldehyde and this is an imine. The imine is effectively the nitrogen analog of an aldehyde. And so the over here, where we have... Uh, um, uh, alpha hydrogens ready to be deprotonated to form an enolate. Over here too we have alpha hydrogens which are ready to be removed so that we can form not an enolate but rather an azeenolate. Aza being the prefix meaning a type of nitrogen. And so we can use a very strong base all right, use a very strong base which uh, will deprotonate and we can then form and aza enolate, and we're going to see why we need to use these at a, at a later stage. All right, the aza enolate. So that's the one the one flavor. Uh, but if we consider that we can form this imine with a primary amine, we should also remember that if we use a secondary amine, and I'm just going to use um, pyrrolidine here. All right, uh, and if we condense those two, the product that we get now is not an imine, but an iminium, right, iminium ion, all right, we get an iminium ion, because the nitrogen over there now has a uh, positive charge, this is normally uh, acid catalyzed. So, um, the iminium ion, of course, is not um, 
particularly stable in this form. Uh, and what it can do is that it can tautomerize, and that is it forms the um, one of these hydrogens will leave, and we get now an. Oops, we'll get an in amine. All right, so here we have an in and then an amine over here. Alkene, amine, that's an enamine. And this is the nitrogen equivalent of your enol. All right, that's what we would have would have had.